Father, we hear about the Holy Spirit come. Fill this place and go with your mind. Touch her on the top of the heads and the bottom of the feet. Stretch in our hearts to be holy again. Forgive us our sins and we pray for it. I make this place holy. We want to worship you in your truth, in your spirit. I will come to worship you in prayer. We are one. We are one. We are one. Thank you, Esther. E aloha kakahiaka kako. Good morning, everyone. Today is October 23rd, 2022, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Mahalo for joining us.
founded in 1879. Are there any visitors this morning? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence from years of losses, pandemic years, disappointment years, hidden years, and from broken days, wasted hours, and painful moments. Yet our arms are open as we receive worship blessings, life blessings, unexpected blessings. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning, praise the Lord. Please join us, we sing our song, You Are My King. Let us uh, give, give God a heart today for us sing, I give you my heart. This is my desire. 
Bless you, God. One life service to you may be acceptable and may not be in vain. Our parents have asked God to give them this child. God has granted their request. And now says our parent, in dedicating us to God, I am giving this child to the Lord for as long as this child lives. And this child now reaffirms our lifelong service in the kingdom of God. And Lord, as long as we live, we are lent unto you. And so we pray that our labor and investment as first Chinese in this trade with caress land, shall you bountiful harvest of souls to the kingdom of God. And we pray that God will restore the fortunes of our church as the first Chinese Church of Christ in Hawaii, and by extension in our lives as God's children in this sun-kissed land, in this day 
and age. And O oh, gracious one, we now offer our prayer for restoration. God, be merciful unto us miserable sinners and save us for the sake of your name. And so we pray for freedom from all forms of imprisonment, all that limit progress in our mission or hinder improvement in our ministry. We call on God to appear and speak to us in our pandemic context and show us what we don't know that keeps us in prison. God, be pleased to show us great things for the worship in our mission donation, for the mighty things, for the witness in our craft fair in first Chinese. And let us humbly and happily claim that our morning of harvesting, our day of reaping, and our time of rejoicing has indeed come to pass this day. In Jesus' name, in whose words we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The scripture reading for today is Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, the New International Version. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and may I share two contexts with you on that uh, verse, one from uh, Hyde Park, London, where it is famed for the, the uh, co preacher's corner, where you can uh, say anything you like. And there was this young preacher, 20-something, a, a preacher actually I admired, and uh, we admire people with gifts we don't have. He had that gift of preaching that I don't have, and I really admire him. Yes, he was standing on a bench, preaching on the text, God be merciful to me, a sinner, and he was heckled. Almost every other sentence, so to speak. God be merciful to me, a sinner, 
And someone in that Polish English accent said, "Speak for yourself, old chap." He said again, "We continue. God be merciful to me, a sinner." And I guess this time from a working class, I might. What you said is true. Oh, blind me! And as he continued, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Someone, I guess this time from uh, uh, East London, said, "Oh, I shall be delighted if that happen." In spite of all the heckling, this young man preached a beautiful sermon. Yeah. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The second context, this time, way back two thousand years ago, at a time when we didn't have the Orthodox Church, or the Roman Catholic Church, or the numerous Protestant churches. At that time, in the、uh, They had West Church or Roman Catholic Church. Attention was paid to those words, the sinner, not daring to look up, beat his chest and said, and therefore we have in that beautiful liturgy, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, my fault, my fault. My own most grievous fault. A beautiful way of showing repentance. And in the、uh, Orthodox Church,、uh, you have a beautiful words, "Curia eleison." Lord, have mercy. And, and so these,、uh, uh, these few words, God be merciful to me, a sinner, has. Happened in many ways, and so we we come to our context this morning, and we continue what we have been doing the last few weeks, and this time looking at this parable of Jesus on praying, and so we see Jesus talk story on how why we need. God's mercy, and in that sense, I use the two words contemplative spirituality. Last week we spoke on combat spirituality, and this morning we look at contemplative spirituality. And that is much needed because, unfortunately, there is too much. Hate, and you hear the hate. You see the hate in the words some preachers use. There is a pastor who had preached that gay people should be, and I'm quoting him. Lined up against the wall, and shot in the back of the head. And in a sermon, he read several passages from the Bible, and condemned homosexuality as a sin to justify what he has said. Namely, and I、uh, quote him: "This is why." We need to put those LGBT people to death. These people are not normal. They are not your average, everyday sinners, as if we have everyday、uh, sinners. There is no hope of salvation. Speaking as if he is God himself. And at certain times during the sermon, people from the crowd could be heard cheering in agreement. He told them that he thought, and I quoting him, the solution for the homosexual in two zero two two is the death 
penalty. Quoting him, these people should be put to death. Every single homosexual in our country should be charged with a crime. The abomination of homosexuality that they have. They should be sentenced with death. They should be lined up against the wall and shot in the back of the head, he said from the pulpit. Another pastor had said, put gays and lesbians in electrified pan to kill them off. And right-wing extremists, they have amped up, checked up the anti-LGBT online. In contrast, may I say, in first Chinese, we accomplish big things because we do small things right by caring for each other and others as well. In our humble ways, we are part of the body of Christ, abiding in our belief to build up our potential in pushing, advocating for racial, social, and economic inclusivity so that no one is left out. And in direct opposition to hate mongering, we humbly petition God have mercy upon us miserable sinners who dare not judge others as if we were in God's place. We mea culpa because we know the intersection of sin being washed away, washed clean by divine forgiveness and which is why we love sinners and pray for them. And those who sin most and have been forgiven most are the ones to love most, not hate most. We have nothing to do with hate mongering since there is no place in our religion for hate. And therefore, we come to contemplative spirituality. And because of the hate mongering around us, we need to push for contemplative spirituality. And I take for example, they are called the, uh, uh, at least in the 1960s, the Cowley Fathers from Oxford University. They call themselves Cowley Dads now to keep pace with modernity. And they have, they call houses in Scotland, India, South Africa, Japan, and Canada. And for them, they are an example of what we call contemplative spirituality or quietism at its best. <laughs> Not the head mongering, but looking unto God. And they have seven offices a day, or we call seven services a day. Starting at five in the morning, okay if it is summer, not so okay if it is cold winter. Uh, I happen to have worked in a post office in London, December 61, and I hated having to wake up three in the morning but they have the first office or service at five. 
even song, the service before dinner, and the last service or office to end the day complain. And from the time of awaking to the time of sleeping, they are encouraged not to talk. Even over meals, whether breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you don't talk, you listen to contemplative theology. Cloud of the unknowing, yeah? for example. I, I, it was my fortune to have spent six weeks with them. And the part I love most, treasure most, is the choir rehearsal, rehearsing how to do the Gregorian chant in that moving, beautiful way before tea time. I then spent a few more weeks with a pastor in Swindon, who was my pastor in Singapore. He had small, energetic children, very noisy and all that. And so he said, yeah, from the sublime with the cowardly fathers to the ridiculous with all the noisy children. And he could say that because he graduated from Oxford. So quietism, contemplative spirituality, prayers is important and there's no doubt about that it is so badly needed these days when extremes in whatever quarter that you happen to see when extremes go overboard and so now I invite you to uh, go where contemplative spirituality hits us most. If there is no light, there is no shadow, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow. And using that as an analogy, we see Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus the light of the world shows shadows, sins, sinners. And the brighter the light of the world, the darker our sins, the darker we are as sinners. And that is why God be merciful unto me, a sinner, is so relevant and the pain of discipleship follows those who declare our loyalty to Jesus. And that's the price of discipleship we face. So we embrace it. A high price to pay for discipleship can turn really can turn into a beautiful one when we experience, praise God, when we experience the greatness of obedience to Christ. The more we obey Christ, the more rewarding is the blessing. And a petition, God have mercy upon us miserable sinners, a petition to God to have mercy on us will come true if, if we didn't give up until the very end. And we know the family gatherings, the much-loved family gatherings, the pandemic has stolen from us, and that is a constant reminder of how sin 
steals our precious moments with God, which is why we petition to God, have mercy upon us. The pandemic has kept us away from the people we love. So too, sin has kept us away from the God we love, which is why we say, God, be merciful unto us sinners. The pandemic has stolen occasions from our children and grandchildren from enjoying the company of their cousins. We too have been deprived of occasions to socialize with each other because of sin. And that's why we pray to God, have mercy upon us miserable sinners. And in that sense, contemplative spirituality is so relevant to us especially during the pandemic. Last, but definitely not least, contemplative spirituality shows us that we treasure people, we treasure each other, not because of success, but because of the intrinsic value in each one of us, and therefore, Paul has written, for through him, Christ, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. And now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, to which I add, as we find in first Chinese, and to God and God alone, be all glory and praise. Amen. Mahalo Kahu. Look around us today. Look at this gathering. We are a community of people who want to follow Jesus. We share so much with those early Christians who struggled in the work of the gospel, but they also found joy in the Lord, joy in the life they shared together. No matter what we are carrying this morning or what we face, we are not alone. At this moment in our worship, we are invited to share what we have so that others will find the same welcome and the same joy that we have known. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. We will now receive our offering. Please join us we sing our offering song. I exalt you. For thou art God. For thou
Let us pray. Great and awesome God, we give you our praise as we present you our tithes and offerings. May the money that is collected be used for the ministry of this church to bring more souls into your kingdom and to nurture us spiritually. May it be used to support missions in the places of the world where people have little opportunity to hear your gospel. May it be used in our local community for those who need a helping hand. Bless the ministries these offerings support. In your name we pray. Amen. Mahalo for the altar flowers from Vi and Manny Barreto. Happy birthday, Kekapa. Immediately following today's service, the Missions Craft Fair resumes in the sewing room, where handcrafted greeting cards and needlework items will be available. Proceeds from the sales will go towards missions. Center Shot Archery Ministry meets every Sunday, meets next Sunday from 9.45 to 10.30, and again from 11.30 to 2 p.m. in the church preschool playground. Center Shot is an archery program that shares the gospel of Jesus Christ. Next week, October 30th, Clara Priester, Executive Director of the Hawaii United Church of Christ Women's Board of Missions, will share during Missions Moment at the 1030 service. Clara is one of the missions groups that will receive a one-time gift from the proceeds of today's craft fair and the monetary donations of the ongoing 76th Annual Missions Monetary Donation and Craft Fair. Your monetary donation of any amount is 100% tax deductible and is greatly appreciated. Please write the check payable to Women's Fellowship, PTF, and the drive ends on November 27th. Thank you for those who have generously donated. November 6th is Remembering Our Saint Sunday. This annual remembrance commemorates all of our saints, living and dead, who share in God's promise. You are invited to light a candle for your loved one. If your loved one passed between November 2021 and November 2022, please contact the church office, and if you are unable to be present, a candle will be lit for your loved one. Email office at firstchinese.org. Kahu Kekapa Lee's books in the conference room gym are available for you to take. The office staff will be on vacation through October 31st. You may still email, call, and leave messages, which will be checked daily. There will be a celebration of life for our brother Daryl Chun on November 12th, Saturday, at the First Chinese Church of Christ. Visitation is from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. The service will, will be from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. Thank you for your attention.
And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom we say, I give you my heart, and the love of God that makes it possible for us to say, I exalt thee, and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit making us to be servants for all people, servants free from hate, servants who respect all people different from ourselves. May the blessing of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend on you and yours richly wherever you may be this morning and evermore. Amen. Yeah. 